The Thomas splint is usually applied for fractures of the femur. In this presentation, the application of the Thomas splint will be demonstrated. The objective of the exercise is to show the application of the Thomas splint. A splint that, in combination with traction, will stabilize the femoral fracture. The Thomas splint is indicated for the treatment or transport of patients with a fractured femur. The patient should lie on his or her back. To begin, the circumference of the thigh is measured to establish the size of the inner circumference of the Thomas splint. Here the circumference of the thigh is 60 centimeters. When choosing the Thomas splint to be used, 4 centimeters should be added to the measurement to allow for swelling. So a splint with an inner circumference of 64 centimeters is selected. The length of the patient's leg is measured, and 20 centimeters are added to establish the length of the Thomas splint. Tink Bensco is used to help with the adhesion of the elastoplast. On the medial side, beginning at the groin, Tink Bensco is applied down to the ankle. The adhesive also is spread on the lateral side from the greater trochanter down to the ankle. The red elastoplast will now be applied. It's important that the elastoplast will not stretch lengthwise. The lower part of the elastoplast is padded to prevent pressure sores forming over the medial and lateral malleoli. The paper backing is removed. and the elastoplast is applied on the medial side, proximally, up to the groin. On the lateral side, the paper backing is removed. The elastoplast is applied as far as the greater trochanter. Care is taken to verify that there are no wrinkles in the elastoplast since wrinkles can lead to pressure sores. Starting four finger widths above the ankle joint, a circular bandage is wound proximally with moderate tension towards the groin. Again, it's crucial that there be no wrinkles in the bandage. A second bandage ensures that the elastoplast is secured as far as the groin. The Thomas splint is applied by passing it over the patient's leg upwards to the groin. The Cromer wire, which must be very well padded in order to prevent pressure sores, is placed under the patient's leg. Proximally, it extends to the ring of the splint. The Cromer wire is bent slightly under the patient's knee. 
and must be further bent to the angle of the heel in order to prevent pressure sores under the heel. The flannelette bandages are used to secure the leg and Thomas splint, while providing support to the Cromer wire. The bandage goes over the ring of the Thomas splint, under the Cromer wire, around the Thomas splint, back under the Cromer wire, and is secured on the lateral side with a sailor's knot. The second and third flannelette bandages are applied in the same manner. The second bandage is located behind the knee. The third is located just above the ankle, posterior to the Achilles tendon. Traction is applied to the fractured femur by tying the cord attached to the end of the elastoplast to the distal end of the Thomas splint. The T-pulley does not exert traction. Instead, it suspends the patient's leg to allow the patient to use a bedpan and to be bathed. The T-pulley is fixed in place, as shown here. The T-pulley is suspended by knotting the cord at the top with a sailor's knot. The cord is passed over the proximal pulley, downwards, and under the T-pulley. Then it goes upwards over the second most proximal pulley. The cord is passed distally over the remaining pulleys to the distal end. Where weights are used to suspend the patient's leg. Additional traction may be applied by re-tightening and knotting the cord at the distal end of the elastoplast. The hands are used to reduce the femoral fracture. It should be noted that tightening the distal end of the elastoplast forces the ring of the Thomas splint to be displaced proximally, possibly causing pressure sores at the groin. To prevent this proximal displacement, contra-traction with weights is applied to the end of the Thomas splint, as shown here.
Eight kilograms are generally sufficient for an adult patient, with less weight used for a child. In general, the weights at the distal end will cause the patient to slip gradually towards the foot of the bed. To prevent this slippage, the foot of the bed is elevated so that the weight of the patient balances the weight at the distal end. The finger is inserted between the ring of the Thomas splint and the groin to verify that there are no pressure points. If pressure points are found, then the traction caused by the cord which secures the elastoplast to the Thomas splint should be lessened. The application of the Thomas splint is now complete.